Hey guys, Brandon Schwartzlander, Midwest Farm and Land Company, uh, bringing you another episode of On the Hunt today. Normally, this is where I would introduce that and tell you all about it, but instead I'm going to flip it over to my daughter, Riley, and she's going to introduce it for us. Hi guys, it's Riley Schwartzlander here with Midwest Farm and Lands. We're on the rock today. It's October 3rd, 2020. Yeah, and uh, we're just going to try and get something big, so stay tuned. Midwest Farm and Lands on the Hunt series is proud to be partnered with the Bow Addicts Nation, the Bow Shed, and our good friends at Jansen Chevrolet. Our Hanging Rock Farm is one of the most special places to me just for a lot of different reasons. This is our third year going to this farm. Uh, first farm that, that I've ever purchased um, and, and one that is just, it's, it's just a special place. Um, it, it holds a lot of good deer. Um, it has great neighbors. We have a 100 acre nature preserve across the road. A lot of different reasons why um, it's, it's special, but I think probably the most, it's, it's just, it was my first opportunity to own a large farm like this and, and to be able to work the ground and change the, the the habitat and and just try to make it better each year so it's 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 really special to me it's 166 acres it's a mix of hardwoods uh draws just a a, a lot of a lot of big woods to the south and then the north is more old pasture um just a, a thick cover overgrown pasture so we've done a lot to again improve habitats added food um, that's probably been our main main draw this year. We we after turkey season we changed up a few things and that's really helped because there's turkeys everywhere now. Um, but uh, it, it's just a it's it's a just such a cool place. It's just been fun to to work it. So and it is for sale, right? It is for sale. It is correct. Okay. I, I think the thing that that when you're taking a kid out, you want them to experience, you know, all the wildlife, all the stuff, all the sounds and. Sometimes the blinds don't do that for you because it's just kind of closed, quiet, they can talk. and So anyway, Riley's pretty good about that kind of thing and, and she really didn't want to, to be in the blind, except it was raining that day. So if there was a day that I ever wanted to be in the blind, it was that day, she didn't want it. She's like, no, let's, let's hunt the corner. I really like that stand, let's do it. So I was like, all right, I don't have any reindeer with me, so I can't even throw something on her. So I feel bad about the whole process, but I thought, you know what, this is it. This is, sometimes it happens like this. Sometimes you're out there, it starts raining, and you just gotta deal with it. So we get up in the stand, everything's going good. It starts raining harder. You know, that, that soaking rain, like not the, not the light or the heavy, just the constant soaking. And all of a sudden I look up and we've got a giant tom turkey, which we've got, you know, archery tags for. And it's out there 45 yards and I'm thinking, man, this is, this could be awesome. Well, about that time, another turkey runs through the plot and scares that one off. So they, they run off, but it was exciting. Half hour later or so, here comes this, it was a spike, I think. Um, but it comes in from the right and I happened to be standing up at the time because I was getting wet. So I'm standing there and I'm, I reach around and I'm like, Riley, well, she knows enough from hunting before that that's, so she's, down on her 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 crossbow in the scope well the deer comes out i go i can't really say anything to her because i'm standing away from her and i stop the deer perfect for her i mean he's 25 yards stop him and i'm like shoot 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 when we were up in the stand and i saw the deer my dad kept telling me to like go and shoot it and shoot it and, shoot. and he made it stop shoot. in the middle shoot. And I couldn't find it in the scope. It then walked off and I was so ticked off and angry because I missed my opportunity for that deer. And I didn't think that I was going to get another one that day, but I was really determined to. So we just sat there for a little longer, hoping that we would see another one. She just starts laughing. She says, I couldn't find him in the scope. And I'm like, he must have been too close. But so she's a little upset, um, but she's trying to laugh it off. But I can tell she's mad. And then she's like, I can't believe I missed my opportunity. I'm like, listen, it's it's about, you know, having patience. It's, it's plenty of time. You got plenty of daylight left. It's all good, you know, whatever. So, so we sit there a little further, you know, it gets a little closer to dark and I can tell that she's getting more and more upset about what happened before, just interactions and her body language and everything. And then all of a sudden 
out of nowhere, here comes the other one, and then the rest is history. Smoked him. Smoked him. I was literally so pumped and so excited that I got one because I remember I saw it and I shot it and I hit it in the exact right spot and I was just like, yes. And I knew he wouldn't go far. So it was just so exciting to see and be able to do it with my dad. I mean, it gives me chills to think about it. And I can't even say that without getting teary-eyed, really, because it, it's just such a special moment. You, you know, when, when she killed her first deer with a regular bow, she was 10, and everything happened so fast that I, honest to God, I had no time to even really collect my thoughts. I mean, we literally were in the stand 15 minutes. Here it comes, it happens, it's over. Um, and then you go to that, and, and I got to savor every bit of it. I mean. The deer stops in the perfect spot. She takes the perfect shot. Everything happened. I mean, and it was just, uh, like I said, it just gets me. I mean, it, it, I don't ever have to kill another deer again as long as I live. Um, I, that is cool for me. And it, and it would be the same way with any of my kids. It's, I think it's special for any, any family member, any kid, whatever. It's, it's why you do what you do. It's why I, I choose to live this lifestyle. It's why I, I work all the time to, to, to have things like this, to be able to experience that. And, and that's to me what the ultimate, you know, American dream is. So.